Now, it's not its most dramatic journey, but the final voyage of the Space Shuttle Endeavour is in some ways one of its most delicate. Travelling at two miles per hour on the back of a 160-wheeled carrier, it's being navigated through the centre of Los Angeles this weekend, en route to its last resting place, the California Science Centre. Five storeys high with a 78-foot wingspan, the Hollywood-style wide load required around 400 trees to be cut down and power lines to be switched off. The spectacle brought thousands of people onto the streets. Everybody came out. It was like everybody was together, focused on it and enjoying it and making friends. All the children are thrilled. From their classroom windows, they can actually see the shuttle all day while they're learning. 25 million miles it's flown and it still looks brand new. Well, I've been speaking to Dr. Kevin Fong, who's worked with NASA and is director of the Centre for Space Medicine at University College London. And I put it to him that it was hard to escape the fact the images look a lot like a funeral. Yeah, it, it is very hard to escape. And, and I mean, I was there when STS-135 landed for the final mission and, that you know, it, it, there's this sort of laconic sort of pull through the streets, always looks like that. But I've come to think of this much more like it's a celebration of what, what this achieved. I mean, you look at the crowds of people and, 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 you know, this is a celebration of what this fleet achieved over 30 years. And it, it has been a fantastic era. I mean, it is incredible. We kind of started to take them for granted for a little while, but I think now that they're going, we're beginning to understand what they were. Well, what's very odd, though, about the shuttle for me is that, you know, if you, if you just look at it, it looks like a plane, but it is breathtaking, and that's because you know where it's been or where it's going. Yes, uh, and, and the part of the problem was that it did begin to look like a, a commercial airliner, and so people thought, well, it's become routine, and so spaceflight is routine. And for a little while, after it launched over and over again, we felt like that. But in fact, it's a remarkable piece of engineering. And, you know, when they drew the list of requirements for this thing, they said, look, it needs to go from naught to 17,000 miles an hour over eight minutes. It needs to deploy and become a space platform that you can do experiments out of. It needs to build a space station, have people do spacewalks out of the back of it. It needs to reconfigure, re-enter at hypersonic speeds, hypersonic speeds uh, and then become a glider and land at a landing strip of your choosing. And all of that, you know, delivered on time. So, so it is remarkable in terms of engineering and its achievements. Well, what did Endeavour do? What were its achievements? Amongst its notable achievements was in 93, it did the first Hubble servicing mission. So it was, it was responsible for those amazing pictures we have of the universe from Hubble. Uh, it, it flew to the Mir space station. So, you know, it was there during the thawing of the relations between the, the Soviet Union, well, Russia and, and, and the United States. It built the first node of the International Space Station. The American manned space program is almost over for the time being, isn't it? Well, that, that's, that's what some people would like to have you believe, and, you know, and some people would like to, to, to watch that and think that this is the funeral of the, the American stand. space program. But I don't think it is. I just think it's the end of this era. I think that the future of human spaceflight is going to be a bit more sustainable and a bit more prosaic in appearance. Uh, you, you had Elon Musk and SpaceX launching Dragon Capsule up to the space station uh, uh, very recently. That's probably what it's going to look like. Uh, and, and that's like all of exploration. When you look at the great heroic endeavors of the past, there's usually this flag and footprints type event. And then nothing really happens for 50 years. Uh, and, and, you know, you saw that with Scott when he went to Antarctica. No one went back to the South Pole until 1956. Uh, when Magellan went round the world uh, at the start of the 16th century, Drake didn't repeat the, the same effort for another 50 years. You always see this sort of out of its time effort, followed by something that becomes more sustainable but more realistic. And I think that that period of, of heroic exploration is over with shuttle, but I think we're going to carry on going.